Hello everyone, in tonight's video I'm going to tie this Macau Feather Nymph and for a start let's get into materials list. As for the thread I'm going to use Semperfly Nano Silk 12 Out. For the hooks TMCon 2487 in 12. For the ribbing material it's going to be wire. Some of this nicely shining Coq de Leon, that's for the tail. Net body material is in my case Macau feather which has this beautiful beautiful color I'm gonna put cover on that this purple flesh and for the thorax I'm going to use this peacock dubbing mixed with some CDC now with any further ado let's get into tying so I will start with 2487 TMCO hook in size 12 uh, 3.3 millimeter jig of bead and 12 odd thread as I said. Now uh, you want to try to start with flat thread just to prevent bulk and secure the thread well because uh, GSP tends to slip around the hook so just make a nice foundation first. That's first condition to, to tie everything properly. Now, uh, the next thing you want to do is to create slight taper in front of the bead over here to push it against the eye and fix it into position so pre you prevent spinning. Now you can do that in multiple ways. Uh, one of them is what I'm just doing now. And from time to time just counter spin your thread to make it flat and create, oops, create less bulk. Now. I'm gonna just do like so and in one moment I'll just add some super glue. Super glue helps a lot because uh, just let me okay here it is uh, because it will just make everything more sturdy and more durable. Okay now after this it's not gonna move ever. I mean you can omit super glue but I prefer to use it not always though I have to say now uh, I'll just go like so and then right about here I want to attach hook and as you will notice uh, I'm attached uh, sorry I'm attaching wire as a, and as you will notice I'm attaching it because I'm tying like so, uh, the opposite way of the of the of the sorry Macau feather. I need to flatten the thread a little bit again, and like oops, like so. I applied too much pressure when it wasn't supposed to be applied. Uh, I don't like this and I'll just go back because I want wire to go on the side of the hook otherwise I'm gonna have problems okay I'll just reattach like so now what I was saying about correct pressure is you want if the wire is facing me I'm going to push away from me then no, pr almost no pressure and then push away, push away, push away, push away and that's how you will prevent this from spinning on you. Okay, done. Now it's time to attach tail. Tail is Coq de Leon. You don't need to use too much, just a couple of barbs and make them relatively short over here and then again emphasis, emphasis on the flat thread and less bulk because we are going in multi multiple layers with this thread so if we did it with a corded thread it's gonna be well too bulky now I'm gonna just break off with this and now, now, now comes the, the fun part. I know that you guys 
some of you or most of you don't have macaw feather so I suggest that you, you, you can use maybe heron and some yellow dubbing for the hotspot I mean it's not that important always use alternatives if, if, you, if you don't have original materials just use alternative who cares I mean fish won't notice for sure now I'm gonna catch it from the opposite side of the wire like so and now just imagine that this is conventional way I'm, I know it's not but imagine it's conventional way because of the following thing I don't know if you noticed but I spun my thread counterclockwise so it will jump into the bend of the hook and then what happens is I don't need too much pressure and I'm not fighting the thread um, when I'm um, catching the material and that's very that's like super useful thing to do okay now I'm counter spinning the Macau feather creating maybe one two three wraps before I get into the gray area and it's not abrupt change as you can see it's like uh, more or less uh, transition like a transition yeah now you can do it a couple of ways you can just hold it here and then go with your fingers around and around and around or you can use rotational fun function of your vise if you have one so whatever you do just keep the constant pressure tension on the material you're using and because I'm using very sh short barbs I have to help myself when wrapping okay I'm just gonna catch it over here okay this is fine I'm, I'm constantly pulling the pressure on the on the bar on those Macau barbs and three now snip off the excess Uh, well I forgot to do a very important thing so I'm gonna do it now and sorry for this uh, okay just let me do this I'm gonna catch this over here okay in the middle and then I'll just catch it with wire over here and this is the reason why I am I tied this wire over here because now I'm just going over the barbs not over the tail now I'm good. just gonna fold this yeah I make mistakes from time to time but it's not important so much as you can see I just solved my problem and that's right about it keeping the tension now I'm wrapping the thread same way as I'm wrapping wire and that way I ensure that I'm having this cons constant tension again okay lock the pencil or flash or whatever you call this cut it here and it's time to create a um, dubbing loop the reason I was telling you that uh, if I had gone with wire directly over the tail there was a chance that I'm, I'm, I was uh, going to rotate it around the hook slightly and I did a little bit but nevertheless it's it's okay I mean not perfect I have to be honest but fish won't mind I do. Now I'm creating a dubbing loop as you can see and at this point I'm just gonna hang my dubbing twister now I'm gonna do one slight thing it just bothers me again not a fish I'm just gonna paint this part over here and then again I'm gonna paint the thread in black and I'm gonna paint dubbing loop in black again just 
to cover up the weight. I don't like white thread that much. Although it's useful when you are doing some dubbings, if you don't want them to change color, just wrap white thread be below your dubbing. Now it's time for CDC, and for CDC I will encourage you to use the crappiest one you can find. Now this is definitely not the crappiest, but it's more than good, obviously. So I'm gonna just pull it like so, and then catch it in the clip. And this probably plenty of work. Oops, my light fell down. This probably felt uh, too much, but you can always pinch out uh, the, the excess CDC. It's easy to do that. Now, one strand of the dubbing loop I'm gonna cover with peacock dubbing. Just dub it lightly. No need to dub too much. And also you don't need to make too thick or too tight dubbing noodle at the moment because you're going to cord it when you twist everything up. Now it's important when you place this stubbing noodle to keep everything together. I like to keep those longer barbs away from the hook and I like to align them with the end of the dubbing because I like to finish at the same time with my dubbing and with my CDC which means that here I have a little bit of uh, dubbing loop without CDC. This angle is 90 degrees and the other reason why I like to use GSP for this dubbing loop is like I can cord it as much as I want, it won't break. Uh, if you use other threads which are not as strong as this one uh, in that case you can break the thread which is very annoying in this stage of the flight. Uh, well, it's annoying always. So I'll just try to uh, wrap everything here and as you can see when I make a wrap I tighten it a little bit extra and again and again and so so when I reach this part, well, I'm just gonna spin dubbing the loop and the thread together sometimes. So, one, two, just to secure everything a little bit more. And then just in front couple of wraps. And now I can snip off this part. Now it's time for with finishing fly. Now I like this fly because it has contrast in the body, which is obvious. It has flash, which you should use especially when it's sunny outside. So I mean, when it's sunny, it makes sense to use flash because it reflects light. When it's a dull day, just use dull fly or dark fly or whatever. Just I need to cut it closer. And um, so I was saying about the body, I like the contrast, I like the slight, it's not hot spot, but it's just two tone. Uh, then in the thorax you have a little bit of shine uh, because of the peacock, which is always good to have on a fly. CDC adds movement, adds some air bubbles maybe. Actually it looks like maybe like a, like a, this cover over the, the caddis flies. It looks like caddis poop, although it's it has tail, so I'm making it as a mayfly, but I never limit myself using these flies only like during may mayfly hatch. No, I will just use them for whenever. Uh, in my opinion, it's important to have the silhouette right, size right, and more importantly, weight and presentation uh, going backwards. So presentation, weight, size, general color, and that's it. Uh, presentation is the key. Uh, that would be it. So guys, tell me what you think about this fly. And thank you very much for your time. Uh, if you like this video, please consider subscribing, share it, like it, and please comment down below because it does push my channel up and it pushes my videos to be recommended to more people. So thank you very much again and see you next week.